In this tutorial, we're going to learn all about privacy rules, what they are, why you need them, and how to use them. Privacy rules are the tool Bubble gives you to protect your app's data and make sure it's secure. You create privacy rules in the privacy section of the data tab to express who can do what with your data, then Bubble enforces your rules on the server. When you create a new app and custom types within your app, your data and your user's data is open to the public unless you explicitly define privacy rules. While public data may be appropriate for use cases like comments on a blog or products on an e-commerce store, not all data is designed to be public, like personal user information. Even if there isn't a page in your app that explicitly shows your app's data to users, it can still be accessed by anyone unless there's privacy rules. That's why privacy rules are so important. They guarantee data is only shown to people who meet the right criteria regardless of how your pages are designed. Now that we know what privacy rules are and why we need them, we're going to look at how privacy rules are created and how they're defined. Here, we can see all of our data types and their rules if there are any. To make a new rule, we click Define a new rule, and we give it a name, something descriptive so we know who the rule is for, like the product's creator. With this rule created, we can now express what it does by writing a condition and giving it permissions. First, we have this area, where we write our condition. This defines if the rule should apply to a specific situation or not. Then we have this area, where we grant permissions for whatever we write in this condition. This defines the level of access that the user has when they meet the above condition. Together, this block that contains the condition and permissions are what we call a rule. Each data type can have multiple rules defined, and if a user does not meet any of the rule requirements, we have this area, called everyone else which covers default permissions for that data type. And when you create a rule for the first time, everyone else has almost every field checked, which means this data is still available publicly. Since we want this rule to handle permissions, we will uncheck these fields in everyone else and add them back in as needed. When you go to write a condition, you're met with two data sources, current user and this. Current user is very literally the current user of the app. That user can be registered, signed up, or a temporary user. The word this refers to this thing in question. So for example, this product literally means a particular product in the database. You would write your condition with current user if you wanted to check fields on the user type or status of the current user. You would write your condition with this if you want to compare this thing to something else. For example, if we wanted to write a rule for product creator, we would write a rule that says this product's creator is current user. Ultimately, conditions must become a yes or no statement. Either this product's creator is the current user viewing this product or isn't. If they are, then they receive these permissions. If they aren't, then the permissions from everyone else apply instead. In our permissions, we are given four checkboxes we use to grant access. First, we have view all fields. This permission allows you to see all the fields on the data type you're setting the rule for. By default, this is checked. If you uncheck it, you'll be able to pick and choose the fields that users in this rule can see. If you leave it checked, all fields will be visible to the user described within the above condition. Then we have find this in searches. This permission allows you to control who can see this thing in a search you create. By default, this box is checked. Therefore, any search done on this type will be visible. We'd uncheck this box if we wanted to prevent users who qualify for this rule from seeing search results for this type. Next, we have view attached files. This permission allows you to control who can view attached files to things since files that are being uploaded by default are public. If it's unchecked, users who fit this rule won't be able to see uploaded files on this type. And then we have allow auto binding. This permission allows you to control fields that can be auto binded too. Auto binding lets you automatically modify any field on the type. By default, this box is unchecked. Check this box and then select from the different fields so the users who meet this rule can auto bind to them. Defining conditions here is very similar to writing conditional statements and workflows and elements, but there's a key difference. Instead of reading this condition as the usual, when this happens, do this, here we're really saying when this condition is true, then these permissions to this data applies. Now we're gonna go over common examples of privacy rules, how you write them, and when you would use them. First, let's look at total control over the entire thing. 
We want privacy rules in place for the user data type so we can secure all personal information that the user stores. Currently, when we view this in run mode, we can see that our search returns all of our users in our app data and all of their personal information. In this example, all user information is data that shouldn't be accessed by anyone but themselves. And again, without any privacy rules, that is not the case. So let's write a privacy rule to reflect protecting the user. We'll select this user and we'll check it against who the current user is, making our condition, this user is current user. In other words, this condition is stating that this user either is the current user or isn't. If it is the current user, then we grant them permission. Users who match this rule can view all fields, find in searches, view attached files, and allow auto binding for custom fields. And for everyone else, we will leave everything unchecked. This gives us total control over the user's data. Again, with this condition and permissions, we're saying only the user themselves can see their own user entry. Since everything is unchecked, if you don't qualify for this rule, nothing is visible. If we run this without any user authenticated, we won't see anything back from this search as we fall into the everyone else category of our privacy rule. When we do run this as a user, we'll only see that user's information because of our privacy rule. Locking down an entire thing like this can come in handy in some cases, but let's take a look at another example where we can see some public information. One of the most common rules to set is one that does grant permission at the field level and not for the entire thing. Imagine our user had some available public information, like their first name and their date of birth, that we wanted other users to see on their profile. But they also have sensitive information, like their address and phone number, that we would want to hide. Our condition stays the same as our first example. This user is current user, as this condition checks to find if this user is the current user but this time we'll grant access in the everyone else panel to give everyone else the fields we want publicly available. To let everyone see the user's name and date of birth, we will check those specific fields. While this gives everyone else access to only the fields we want public, we'll need to check find this in searches so our user data will show on our page with the repeating group. Now when we run the page as an authenticated user, we can see more than just ourselves. We can see everyone else and only their public information, in this case, their name and date of birth. And if we are that particular user, we can see all of the information. This is where privacy rules really start to shine and why they're essential to have in your app before it goes live. When you have multiple privacy rules, there's a chance a user can meet the requirements for more than one of them. In this case, privacy rules become additive. Let's look at an example. Assume we're building an app that lets companies and their employees review candidates who are applying to that company. Our data type has each of these fields as a list of users. In our privacy rules, we want to reflect that only employees who belong to a particular company can see their list of candidates, and only admins of that company can see their employees as well as their candidates. To do this, we first have a condition for when this company's employee contains current user. When a user meets this condition, it means that they're an employee for this company. Next, we have a similar rule for when this company's employee contains current user and this company's admin contains current user. In this rule, we're checking that the user is still an employee of the company, just like the first rule, but we're able to give them admin specific privileges if they are also an admin. The user who meets this rule will actually meet both of these rules and will be allowed each rule's permissions that they don't already have. Finally, we have the everyone else panel, which will give permissions to any user who does not meet any of the above rules but it will also act as the default permissions for everyone, including people who meet the above rules. So now that we have these conditions, let's set their permissions one at a time. First, let's start with everyone else. If you don't meet any of the rules, meaning you're not an employee or an admin, then what do we want you to see? We can allow you to find companies and searches and the names for each company. Since this applies to everyone else, it will apply to those who meet the above rules as well. This is important as now the above rules by default will both be able to find companies and searches and their names without having to check anything in their individual rule. So if we run this as a user who isn't an employee or an admin, we can see the companies and their names, but no other information. Next, let's set permissions for the rule where a user is just an employee of that company. If you're an employee, we will permit you to see the list of candidates who are applying to this company. In this instance, since everyone else lets us cover the searches and the name of the company, we don't have to check those off. If we run this as a user who is an employee to one of these companies, 
we will see only that company's list of candidates. Every other company's candidates are protected from this privacy rule, but we can still see their name and find them in this search because we benefit from everyone else's permissions. Finally, we have the rule for when the current user is an employee for a company and an admin. Here we can grant admin specific access, while still gaining both the employee permissions from the above rule and the default permissions from everyone else. This is the rule that will benefit most from other rules. As an admin, we will let you view all the employees in the company and allow auto binding to the company's fields so you can modify that automatically. If we run this as a user who is an employee and an admin, we are then granted all of those permissions from the other rules. We can find this in searches, see the company, find candidates that are applying, and view the employees in our company thanks to rules being additive. By default, we have four permissions that we can grant access to, but since Bubble lets you turn your data into its own API, our privacy rules will need to reflect that. In doing so, Bubble will warn you that unless you set privacy rules, any type can be accessed via the API if you expose them. By exposing a data type to the data API, we are given three new permissions, modify, delete, and create. Modify via API grants the user permission the right to modify any of the fields of this thing. For the modification to be allowed, the rule that governs this permission must be true both before and after the modification. This lets you restrict which fields may be modified. If you need more granular field restrictions, instead of granting this permission, you would use the workflow API, which lets you control exactly what gets changed. Delete via API grants the user permission the right to delete this thing via the API. And create via API grants the user permission the right to create new things via the API. If the rule that grants this permission references fields on the thing, attempts to create a thing where the rule does not apply will be rejected. So now if we're building an app where we wanted to modify, delete, or create data through an external source, we can do so securely. Using privacy rules can make debugging harder, as protected data may not be visible in your workflows. The debugger will however give a special mention for things that have been altered by privacy rules so you know what's being protected. When you inspect data with privacy rules that are protecting that thing, you'll see red warning text like so. Always check the debugger and be on the lookout for this, as it's a common trap that users get into thinking their data is suddenly empty when really it's just behind a privacy rule. Privacy rules do not apply to modifying data through workflows. The way you control who can do what in terms of data modifications is through conditions on the workflow's events and actions using only when. Workflow conditions are then checked on the server, which is just as secure as modifying data through auto binding where you have to set up privacy rules. By default, privacy rules are something you have to add manually, but we have a setting to allow for privacy rule creation each time you create a new data type. In the settings tab under general, we can check off make new data types private by default with a privacy rule placeholder. And now if we make a new data type, a privacy rule will be created and waiting for us to fill it out. Until we do, we'll get an issue because we have no condition. With this turned on, it's good practice, especially if you forget to add privacy rules altogether, but you can still delete the rule in case your data type doesn't need it. Most apps are designed with conditions on elements to help show information to only the right users. For example, a profile page can be viewed by the public, but with this edit button, it should only show for the user whose profile it is. On this edit button, we would have a condition that prevents anyone but the user whose profile it is to see it. Then only the user whose profile it is would be able to see this button, and by clicking it, they'll see a form to edit their information. While this is a great way to build the UI for your app, it's a very common mistake to think that this is all you have to do to secure your data. You still need privacy rules in place to ensure that if this form was loaded from someone other than you, the data is protected. Privacy rules are enforced on the server, securing your data. They revolve around you creating conditions for the user to then gain appropriate permissions. Without privacy rules, your data is not secure. Any user can see anyone else's information, and someone with programming knowledge can easily access all of your app's data, even if you never design a page for it or expose it. So make sure that if you have private data that you store on your app, you add privacy rules. Test out your privacy rules. Open up a blank page and test it one at a time so you can really see what each condition and permission does and how it's being set.
Oftentimes, mistakes will happen both ways, where data is insecure, where data seems missing, but is really protected. So be vigilant going forward as you build out your application and add privacy rules. That's it for this tutorial. For more, be sure to check out bubble.io slash academy.